Hello, and welcome to another Hero Quest video. Today I'm going to be painting the orcs from the main game. I'm going to be using the card art as a guide. I have no intention of following it exactly, but I do want people to recognize the orcs when they see the card. The first color up is going to be orc skin, and this is an Army Painter Speed Paints 2.0 paint. There is eight orcs in the base game, and I'm going to be painting all eight at once. There's four females and four males. It really doesn't make much difference. I'll maybe add a little bit more colour to the females. Maybe I won't. We'll see. To be honest with you, I'm not certain that I like this green. It reminds me of the Incredible Hulk rather than an orc, but I'm going to run with it anyway because this is the colour Army Painter have told me is orc, so we will see. We'll see what the turnout like. The next colour up is going to be dead white and I'm going to use it to touch up some of the areas that I didn't want to hit with the green which inevitably I did hit with the green because I'm impatient. Although I've sped this footage up it is still kind of very slow and boring I think. What I would like to know from you guys is, would you like these videos edited shorter? You won't get to see me painting everything, but you will get the general idea. What's your thoughts? Let me know in the comments, please. Perhaps that's only my perception. YouTube Analytics tells me that people tend to watch my videos for between 3 and 5 minutes. I'm assuming they skip along, seeing what colours I use, and then maybe look at the end to see what kind of result I've obtained. I would think that's probably what a lot of people are doing. Maybe you could comment in the comments section whether or not that's you. Next colour up is going to be Broadsword Silver. There's an awful lot of silver on all of these orcs. An awful lot of armour plates. So really you could paint these guys with three or four colours. I'm going to add one or two more than that just to give a bit of variety. Another option would be adding timestamps to the videos so that people could skip ahead to whatever section they wanted to see. What do you guys think of that? Or should I just leave them as I've originally edited them with all the footage that I've recorded and a voiceover letting you know what's happening, what I'm doing and what my plans are and my reasoning is? I'm sure you're all aware that I'm still very new to this YouTube thing. I'm still learning the ropes and I'm still making a lot of mistakes. But I am trying my best and it is kind of like a second job. It's hard work producing these videos. Not that I'm whinging about it. I have great fun doing it and I'm learning new skills all the time.
And it's back to the white paint again. Time to repair some of those mistakes, for want of a better term, that I've made uh, with the armoured colour. Another thing I've learned in this short YouTube journey, speed paints and contrast paints are very hard on brushes. This is the third fine detail brush that I have completely knackered in two months. So I might have to look into buying some brush soap, uh, see if I can revive some of these brushes, because they're not the cheapest things in the world, although they're not expensive brushes to be fair. And the next colour up is going to be Talos Bronze, and I'm going to use it for the two big maces that the two female orcs are holding. And that's really just to give them a different colour, to break up the silver. This would be my least favourite of the three metallics that I have from the Army Painter Speed Paints range, although it's alright. Looks bronze-ish. Next colour up is going to be Hoplite Gold and I'm going to use it on some small areas. If you look closely at the card art you will see the small pieces of gold here and there on the orcs. So I'm going to reproduce that approximately. And now I'm going to switch from speed paints to Citadel Contrasts and I'm going to use Snakebite Leather. Although I do miss the original Snakebite Leather from Games Workshop, this is actually a really nice colour. Certainly over the top of a white primer, it produces a excellent leather effect. If you get bored watching me paint leather, skip ahead to roughly 10 minutes 38 and you'll find the next colour starting. If you're still watching me painting snakebite leather on these models, congratulations. You have avoided TikTok brain. You can last more than a couple of minutes without losing your marbles and having to go and click on something else. Very good. Well done. Next colour up is going to be an Army Painter Speed Paints Peachy Flesh and I'm going to use it for some of the hair on a couple of the orcs.
And now I'm going to use some grim black. And again, it's for the hair on two of the orcs. Next color up is Ancient Honey, and I'm going to use it for the remaining two orcs' hair. Back to Citadel color again, and this time Reichland Flesh. It's a shade, and I'm going to use it over the top of the gold to add a little bit of shading. The gold's very garish, and this is going to tone it down a bit. In keeping with the card art, I'm going to add some red to the orcs in the form of, I assume, tattoos. I don't think it's blood splatters, but they appear to have red facial and body tattoos, so they're going to get some of that with the red paint. The red speed paint over the top of a green speed paint is kind of dull, but it's acceptable. At the end of the day, we're trying to get these done in a hurry, to a reasonable standard. I'm now on to the basing, and I'm going to use the same grey that I always use for my Hero Quest figures. Use whichever grey you've got a hold of. I've put a alternative to my grey down in the bottom left hand corner. You can try and find the Astronomicon grey if you wish, which is the one I use, or you can use an entirely different colour. Again, I have seen people using clear acrylic bases, and they look quite good. And in the future, my Hero Quest models may be converted to clear plastic bases. Lastly, I'm going to come in with my matte varnish and they're all going to get a good healthy coat of varnish and left to dry before being put into the plastic storage containers in the, in the Hero Quest box. I'm always going to highly recommend that you varnish these models or any of the Hero Quest models because they're going to be in and out of plastic trays. The paint will wear off. They will become chipped. They are quite bendy, so Again, you want to avoid bending these figures as much as possible as well, just in case the paint cracks. I haven't had that happen yet, but it doesn't mean it couldn't happen. So just be a little bit careful with them. And that's it. It works painted to what I deem to be an acceptable standard. Certainly when someone picks the, the card, the orc card, as a monster, they're going to recognize these guys when they come out. They match the card close enough. My playgroup for this game are definitely casuals. They're family members and one friend. So that's why I've chosen to follow the card art so it's very obvious to people what they see on the cards as interpreted on the miniatures. This is the part of the video where I ask you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the wee bell icon so that you'll see my next video. And hit the thumbs up button if you're able to or the thumbs down button. It's entirely up to you. 
and I would like to thank you for watching, thank you for your time, and thank you for your patience. This has been quite a long painting video for Hero Quest figures, almost 17 minutes. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.